Hello, good afternoon. My name is Adana Awuzi and I am now a third year medical student at Queen's University Belfast. Here is my submission for the Global Health Challenge. I have chosen Sustainable Development Goal 12, which is ensuring sustainable production and consumption patterns. I will specifically be looking at chemicals in agricultural processes. I was inspired to choose this topic because earlier in the year I had to complete quite a detailed health profile of Costa Rica. Agricultural workers in Costa Rica are disproportionately affected by pesticides, notwithstanding those workers who are in the continent and those further afield. The WHO has explained that there are very unreliable estimates to actually how many workers are affected by this problem, but it is growing every single year. Costa Rica hosts 6% of the world's biodiversity, despite having a relatively small landmass. Uh, subsequently, Costa Rica is a large exporter of agricultural produce such as bananas, coffee beans and pineapples. If anyone watching this video looks to their kitchen now, they'll probably find quite a few fresh produce that are not from the UK. On our side of the food chain, we may ingest small amounts of pesticides in our food, but this cannot be compared to the vast quantities of pesticides that farmers come into contact with. And this creates a massive, massive inequality between producers and consumers. Despite Costa Rica having a very, very high life expectancy of 78.9 years on average, agricultural workers are 12 times more likely to be hospitalised than the general population. Farmers go to work, ingest pesticides, come home, their clothes may be coated with pesticides, they interact with their family, and they also get into contact with the pesticides, and the cycle continues. It's unsustainable. To add to this problem, Pesticides are often used prophylactically, so for example fungicides for black toxicotoca or maybe nematicides uh, targeting bananas. However, many studies have shown that some farmers actually cannot detect when there is um, an active infestation happening. So all this addition of pesticides adds to their cumulative risk of pesticide poisonings where they may face visual disturbances, in longer term scenarios, cancer. My proposal is that there is a dedicated, centralised governing body for the use of pesticides. All traders in pesticides must register with this body. This body will allocate task forces to vigorously testing out alternatives such as wood vinegar, which has bactericidal properties, or perhaps even using physical traps for large pests like uh, pseudo stem traps for banana weevils. Adding limits or quotas to the amount of pesticides that are safe on a farm. Collectively as a society we need to kind of consider why our standards are so high. Obviously we'd all prefer the perfect product, uh, blemish free bananas or oranges, but these high standards force uh, farmers to go that extra mile, adding extra pesticide to ensure that uh, we consumers get the perfect product. Making it a priority to design comfortable, safe, and appropriate personal protective equipment for the farmers working in tropical and subtropical climes, um, particularly with easy to understand instructions, fewer than 40% of farmers actually use pesticide, uh, personal protective equipment when working with pesticides. Isolating the agents that cause human damage, many of these agents are called inerts, finding uh, what they do, their processes as um, a matter of urgency so that pesticides can be appropriately um, marked as hazardous. I would like to stress that this is still an emerging topic. Rules and regulations could model those of already existing. Obviously, this would have to be expanded to a global scale as we all become more interconnected worldwide. This is an intersectional issue between climate change, planetary health and global health. Therefore, we must work collaboratively from bottom to top to mitigate against poor health outcomes in agricultural workers. It is not enough that higher income countries, say for example the US, in the 1970s they banned a pesticide called DCP, um, whereas TECO counterparts are still looking for compensation for li the lifelong effects of sterility today. Even as early as 2019 last year, uh, children in Costa Rica uh, were reported as having pesticide poisoning, which really highlights the stark reality of the issue. It is pertinent that we act so that another part of the population can be part of the good statistic, having a long, healthy life expectancy. Thank you for your time.